In Vue.js, it is possible to bind data to HTML attributes such as ID, class, style, and even Boolean attributes such as disabled for an input or a button. However, we cannot use the mustache syntax for HTML attributes. Instead, Vue provides another directive, namely the vBind directive. Now, this directive can be used to bind data property values to HTML attributes. Let's take a look at an example. Now, back here in Visual Studio Code, we have an empty div tag, and to this div tag, we have associated a view instance. And this view instance currently does not have any data properties. So let's go ahead and create a new data property. I'm going to call this my ID. And then this is going to be set to the string data ID. Now let's create a new HTML element so that we can bind to the ID attribute. So I'm going to create an h1 tag. And for the inner HTML, I'm just going to provide data ID. Now I'm going to add a new heading tag so that we can bind to the HTML element. So h1 and I'm just going to call this code evolution. And to bind to the ID property, we're going to make use of the vbind directive followed by a colon followed by the attribute to which we want to bind. Now this is going to be the ID attribute. For this, we need to assign a value and this value is nothing but the data property which is going to be my ID. So my ID. So just to reiterate, to bind to the ID attribute, we use the vbind directive followed by a colon followed by the attribute name. And then to that, we assign a data property, which in our case is my ID. So now if we save this and refresh our browser, we can see that code evolution heading appears. And if I inspect the element, you can see that it has an ID of data ID. And if we go back to Visual Studio Code, that is the value of this particular data property. So data ID is going to be replaced over here at runtime. Let's also take a look and see what happens when we change the value of my ID in the browser. So I'm going to go back to the browser in the console. I'm going to type vm dot my ID and then I'm going to set this equal to test ID. Now if I go back to the elements panel, you can see that the ID attribute of this particular h1 tag has been updated to the new value test ID. Now let's take a look at another example. I mentioned that the vbind directive can be used to bind to boolean attributes as well. So let's create a new property. I'm going to call it is disabled and then set it to false. Now over here, I'm going to create a new button tag. And to this button tag, we're going to use the vbind directive again. But this time, we bind to the disabled attribute of the button element. So we bind to the disabled attribute is disabled property. Let's save this and refresh our browser and check what happens. So I refresh it. You can see that in the button element, the disabled attribute is not present. This is because is disabled property is set to false. If I go to the console and change the data property value, so vm dot is disabled is equal to true. You can see that the bind button is now disabled. And if I go to the elements panel, you can now see the disabled attribute present for the button element. So that is the basic gist of vbind directive. It can be used to bind to HTML attributes. Now, most of the time in your application, you are more likely to bind to the class or style attributes. So let's take a detailed look at binding to classes and styles in the next few videos.